five performance scenes, and 13 B-roll scenes all shot in the same corner of a room. I've shot well over 100 music videos over the years, and I would be lying if I told you that this wasn't a low budget shoot, but that's okay because I was actually testing out my new Canon R5C in low light for this particular music video. Now I knew that I would have to rely on a handful of performance scene compositions and lighting techniques to pull this off. We only had three hours to pull off this music video and if you want to learn how I properly execute music videos from start to finish then click the first link in the description down below which you will be able to enroll into my online music video course with over 150 music video lessons. I literally spent over 800 hours creating this course and price it at such an affordable rate because I want to give up and coming videographers access to high quality learning tools to further excel their music video skills. I truly believe that this is the most in-depth, affordable and relatable online music video course on the internet, hands down. Let's cover the most frequently asked questions I get in every single one of my music video tutorials. So the camera used for this shoot was the Canon R5C with a Canon EF 35mm f1.4 lens. I use this lens for the entirety of this music video shoot. I had the Canon R5C rigged out with a cage, top handle, and Atomo Shogun 7 external monitor. In terms of camera settings, any time that I filmed in 4K 24fps, I filmed at f1.8 and 1 over 50 shutter speed. For any b-roll shots where I had the intent of slow motioning the clips, I filmed in 4K 60fps, f1.8 and 1 over 125 shutter speed. Because I was filming in C-Log for every single shot, I made sure to leave my ISO at 800 for every single scene as that is the recommended native ISO for Canon C-Log 3. Now whether you film on Sony, Lumix, Fuji, Nikon, look up your base native ISO settings for log shooting and you'll be able to find it pretty easily when you search online. Our first scenes you see here are two extras on their phones FaceTiming each other. We then swapped the extras positions, reshot b-roll scenes, and literally just repeated the same process but with extras changing into two more different fits as you can see here. Now lighting breakdown here was very simple. I have an Aperture 300D as a key light on the right side of the frame to put a spotlight on the subject closest to the camera, as well as an Amaran P60C panel light spilling a warm 3500 Kelvin light source into the entirety of the scene as we wanted to go with a warm color palette for this video. I also placed the second Amaran P60C panel set to 3500 Kelvin as well on the ground to the right of the frame pointing up at the ceiling to hit the hanging props with a warm tone and just add a little bit of depth to the background. On the 300D and both P60C panels, I placed grids on the soft boxes to make the light more directional and have less spill onto the background. If you don't place grids on your soft boxes, the light would literally just spill onto the background which would show the back wall. Sometimes you would want this for a specific shot, you want the light to spill all over the place. For these shots, because it was dark moody, we didn't want to see the background, I literally just placed grids on every single one of the lights. And what this ultimately helps us do is crush the shadows in post and only have the subjects lit up in frame. In the background, we hung various props with fishing line to give the illusion of certain props hanging in the background that were significant to the song itself. At the end of each b-roll shot of the subject standing still on their phones, I hopped off of this countertop where I was capturing a static shot and captured b-roll of each subject with more motion underneath the Aperture 300D key light. I made sure to film the majority of the footage on the shadowed side of their faces to make the footage look a lot more cinematic or dramatic. A good rule of thumb is to try your best to film on the shadowed side of people's faces as your footage will just look better. Lastly, we had one more b-roll shot of the two extras dancing with each other under the key light. So I still don't have a lot of reps on this Canon R5C and I'm totally getting used to the menu system. So my dumbass accidentally filmed these shots in 4K 24 FPS instead of 60 FPS. And I had every intention to film these shots in slow motion. Now I'm about to say something and I do not recommend you doing this as it is extremely last resort. But in Final Cut Pro 10, I slowed the 24 FPS clips down to 50% speed and hit them with optical flow. This at least gave me some usable slow motion clips and because the scenes were darker, you really didn't even notice that I was filming in the completely wrong frame rate and the shutter speed value for slow motion. Dodge a bullet there, but definitely won't be making this mistake again when using this camera. Essentially, because we were filming in the same location for every scene, I had to get a little creative with my composition. However, this honestly didn't stress me out one bit on set as performance scenes for music videos are definitely my bread and butter and I've always been really solid at composing 
using and manipulating performance scene angles. Now I'm not going super in depth into performance scenes and camera operating in this course, but again, I do teach all of my tips and tricks for music videos inside of my online course. I filmed one performance scene sitting on top of a counter with a more laid back handheld motion, as well as a second performance scene with the exact same composition, but a little more aggressive handheld motion. All I was doing was literally just hugging the camera to my chest and vibing along with the song as it played while also paying attention to the artist's movements throughout the performance scene. When the artist slowed their body movement down, I slowed my camera movements down. When the faster rapping part of the song came up, I started to add more aggressive handheld movements. I say this time and time again, but a lot of beginners will shoot a lot of single composition performance scenes on set and will think that a certain angle can only be captured once or expired after you do a specific camera angle. In this example I just showed, I shot the exact same composition, but all I did was change the flow of my handheld movement. One was more laid back and the other was more aggressive. By fluke, I found a camera angle that was using the warm 3500 Kelvin key light from the Amaran P60C that looked super clean, so I quite literally ran the song back right then and there and told Pimpton to run a performance scene back for me. I said, don't ask questions, just do it and trust me. This ended up being by far one of my favorite compositions we captured throughout every performance scene that we shot. The warm tones of the P60C panel light, shooting on the shadowed side of the face and putting a slow side-to-side -side handheld movement into effect made for an awesome performance scene. Our next performance scene was placing the camera body below chest level and slightly pointing the camera up at Pimpton. By doing this, you make the artist appear higher than life as they are looking down on the camera or viewer. For these shots, I simply slowly rotated the camera left to right and pushed in and out on Pimpton, shooting all of these shots handheld and in manual focus. So yes, every single shot you've seen so far has been me filming in manual focus. If you guys wanna learn how to master manual focus pulling from the comfort of your own home, check out this video tutorial right here. That video explains exactly how I learned manual focus without having to trial and error on actual client sets. Last but not least, Pimpton said he wanted a top down shot. So I got my ass up onto a bar stool and gave the camera a very smooth rotating shot throughout the entirety of the performance scene. I use the Aperture 300D as my key light with a grid and then place an Amaran P60C panel light set to 3500 Kelvin on the floor behind Pimpton and remove the grid so the light would spill all over the place. One thing I've yet to mention is that every single one of these shots we actually used a haze machine. Straight up, these are filmmakers best friends when it comes to lighting up darker, more moody or emotional scenes. I personally felt that it added a lot more depth to our shot and just some more like dynamic image so I made sure to hit every single scene with a bit of haze. When I was filming this shot, I did catch the panel light in frame on the ground quite often. I could have moved it out of the way but I really liked where the light was showing up on camera so I decided to keep it and simply crop in by 15 or 20% for specific performance scenes and posts that did show the light in frame. So that's basically a simplified breakdown of how we filmed a 3 plus minute music video all in the same corner of a room in three hours. Super simple lighting techniques using only three lights on set and we achieved a great looking music video and the artist was super stoked with the final result. Again, this entire music video was filmed in under three hours, including setup and takedown time. Now again, if you guys wanna learn how to take your music video skills to the next level, get exclusive discount codes to industry leading filmmaking brands and direct access to myself in a private Facebook community, enroll in my music video course down in the description below. Thanks everybody for watching. Stoked to put out another music video behind the scenes. We got much more coming down the pipe and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.